Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and today we are telling you the truth about RV roadside assistance, whether it's necessary and what we have. And what we have has changed over the years. We've been doing this for a little over 12 years now, so we've had some experience with different companies, and we'll share that with you here today. I don't know any better way to address this topic than simply to recount all of our personal experiences dealing with these different companies, tell you what happened, and then you can make your own decision about who to go with or whether you even need RV roadside assistance. My answer to that personally would be absolutely yes. And it's not necessarily just for when you have a flat tire, because I know a lot of you guys out there will say, well, I can change my own flat tire. I don't need anybody to help me with that. The one reason I would say you do need roadside assistance is if you were to break down and have to have your rig towed. One tow trip will probably pay for I don't know, five or six years of roadside assistance, just because tow trucks are very expensive and depending on where you're broken down, your tow could be $1,000 if they're having to tow you 100 miles. And if you're somewhere in the Yukon Territory or Alaska or out in the middle of South Dakota somewhere, you might get a tow bill like that. So that cost to join a roadside assistance program very easily will pay for itself in a situation like that. Yeah, I know for some of you guys, there's a bit of a macho thing going on here. Every time we post a video that shows someone else changing a tire on our rig besides me, yeah. somebody asks, can't you change a tire? Yes, I've changed many tires in my life. Yeah. I've changed enough tires to know that if it's 100 degrees outside and the asphalt is 120 degrees and we're broken down on an interstate, I'm willing to let a professional change the tire my masculinity and man card are intact. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Honestly, not worried about that. I think that changing a tire on the side of the interstate is incredibly dangerous. And I personally don't want him changing a tire on the side of the interstate. I will happily let whoever the roadside assistance company calls come and do it. They've got a truck with big flashing lights to let people know, hey, we're working on this camper and they can crawl under there. I don't want him to be the one under there. So that's just my personal opinion. Everybody else has their own and that's totally fine. Now, if you are insistent on changing your own tire, or even if you're not, we highly recommend that you carry a trailer ramp if you have a twin axle trailer because this makes tire changes much easier on a twin axle trailer. You yeah. can just pull your trailer up on the ramp, it lifts the bad tire off the ground, makes it super easy to do a tire change. Yeah, and especially like with our Airstream, it has a very specific point that you're supposed to jack it up on. And sometimes explaining that to somebody that's coming to change your tire, they don't really take you seriously or they just sort of look at you and go, yeah, whatever and then they put it where they want it. And sometimes that can do really bad things to your Airstream. I know that may not be the case with all travel trailers, but with Airstream, it is the case. Now you Airstreamers out there, you have rubber torsion axles, and if someone jacks up your trailer using those axles, they could potentially damage your axle. That's an expensive fix. <laughs> yes, you guessed it. There will be a link beneath this video <laughs> to some trailer ramps. Now, with that said, we're gonna tell you some stories. It's story Story time, kids. We're going to tell you about our experience dealing with different companies and roadside assistance. When we first set sail with Long Long Honeymoon, we bought AAA roadside assistance before ever getting out on the highway. Yeah. And we traveled with our Airstream all across North America until we had our first flat tire. Guess where we had our first flat tire? Those of you who've been paying attention know it was in Myers Flat, California. More evidence that we're living in a simulation, by the way. So we called AAA thinking, no big deal, it's a flat tire. And AAA said, oh, is the flat tire on your truck? And we said, no, it's on our trailer. 
And they were like, oh, sorry, you don't have AAA plus, which is what you have to have for your camper. And I was like, well, can I upgrade to that? Or what is that, you know? And they're like, well, you have to have your AAA membership for a year before you can upgrade to AAA plus. Now, I don't think this is the case anymore, but this was the case in 2007. So basically, we were stuck. AAA said, sorry, you don't have the right plan. You're on your own. So our first experience with RV roadside assistance, I was highly annoyed because we had paid for AAA, but it did not cover our travel trailer. Yeah. So you need to really pay attention when you sign Ask up for one of these questions. plans. Our next interaction <laughs> with RV roadside assistance came with Good Sam roadside assistance. Yeah, we switched to Good Sam roadside assistance. We set out on another long, long honeymoon adventure, crisscrossing the country, and we experienced our first proper tire blowout just outside of Phoenix, Arizona, and got to use our Good Sam roadside assistance. Yep. We called Good Sam uh, because we were in a pretty dangerous situation, not really far off the interstate highway. Yeah, and we were pretty far from the next exit, so we didn't want to just hobble along the edge of the road because traffic was moving, I would say, at least 75 miles an hour, maybe 80 miles an hour. Yeah, this is a good example of when you may not want to be out there changing a tire. Thankfully, our blowout was on the passenger side of the vehicle, mm -hmm. but if it had been on the driver's side of the vehicle, uh, it would have been right next to the interstate. And I'm going to point out to some of you guys with twin axle trailers, if you don't have a terrible blowout, you can actually run down the highway with a flat tire for a short distance at a reasonable rate of speed. And you could even safely get to the next exit. I'm just saying if you have a slight flat that it's not a flapping blowout that's gonna tear up your trailer, you might be able to sort of limp along to the next exit safely right. because you've got a twin axle trailer and those other three tires will be supporting the weight of your trailer. In this case, it was a true blowout. It was doing some damage. We had yeah, to Yeah, it did over. do damage. So Good Sam sent out a tire professional. Yeah, at that it point. was easy breezy. We made the call. Somebody was there, I think within like 30 or 40 minutes. Right. And we were back on the road 20 minutes later. A couple of years passed. Mm -hmm. We were setting sail, this time bound for Alaska, yeah. crossing through Nebraska on a very, very hot summer day, and we suffered another tire blowout. Yes, mm -hmm. this is when we were running those wonderful Goodyear Marathon tires we've told you all about. <laughs> and we called Good Sam. Sure enough, they sent a tire professional out, changed the tire. We went along our merry way. Everything's yeah. great, right? So it was an easy call. They sent somebody out really fast, did the job, got us back on the road, Easy breezy, no problems. So you'd think we're just thrilled and pleased as punch with good Sam roadside assistance, right? right? And so far we were. Not so fast, my friend. On the same journey, yep. and that may be significant, a yeah. few months later we were coming back down from Alaska mm -hmm. and we had a problem with our truck. This was before our truck Seymour had been bulletproofed by Bulletproof Diesel. Yeah. So when we had the original EGR cooler in our truck, our truck broke down because of that faulty part and we needed a tow. So no we needed worries, not right? only a tow for our truck, but obviously also for our trailer. But no worries, right? Because we had Good Sam Roadside Assistance. Well, we called Good Sam Roadside Assistance, and this happened in Napa, California. We weren't exactly in Yukon territory. We were in Napa. We were right in town. Thank goodness we were on a little side street, so we weren't in a dangerous spot. We, we called Good Sam Roads RV Roadside Assistance, and we requested a tow, mm -hmm. and they basically said no. Well, I spent about an hour and a half on the phone with them while the gentleman at Good Sam made calls trying to find a tow truck. And he kept coming back to me saying, I can't find a company willing to come out. So an hour and a half into this of me being on the phone with him, he finally comes back and says, well, we're just not having any luck. We'll try again tomorrow. And I said, excuse me? And he was like, yeah, we can, we can try again in the morning. And I said, well, I'm broken down on the side of the road right now. 
and tomorrow morning is unacceptable. And he was just like, well, that's all I can do. And I said, I'm gonna take care of this problem myself and then I'm gonna make sure good Sam hears about it. Yeah, I was told to go ahead and set up a scheduled service for in the morning and we'd be glad to you know, start searching for you in the morning too. Uh, like I say, if it's another agent, they'll be calling uh, different uh, providers in a different sequence and there's always good chance uh, different. Right. Uh, I'm gonna have, I'll just go ahead and tell you, I'm gonna have this problem resolved myself, like in a couple of hours. So I'm not gonna rely on Good Sam to do it for me tomorrow. What I wanna do is I wanna talk to a customer service person just to let them know that this is not an acceptable thing. You know, it's not acceptable to leave people stranded overnight somewhere. That's just that's just not acceptable when you're a roadside assistance company. This is why people pay for it. So it's nothing personal against you. I know you've totally called everybody you can call. I'm saying it's an overall nationwide Good Sam problem. It's three in the afternoon. You know, it's three in up. the afternoon. <laughs> it's not like it's midnight and we're in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you know, we're we're 40 minutes outside of San Francisco, one of the biggest cities in the country. You know, it's just kind of crazy that that Good Sam does not have something in place to remedy situations like this, because I'm sure we're not the first people that have experienced this. So we hang up the phone. I call the first tow truck company that I can find online, call them, and they're like, oh yeah, we can come out. It'll be $85, because they were literally towing us a mile down the street. Yeah, they were towing our yeah, truck. We were less than a mile from the Ford dealership. So I said, great. They sent somebody, they were there within an hour. So at that point, I'm really mad because it's like, why did Good Sam drop the ball? I had no problem finding somebody to come out. They come, they tow our truck away. I want to make this clear that you understand what happened here. Yeah. We had a catastrophic failure in our truck. Mm -hmm. We needed a tow. We had paid Good Sam RV roadside assistance for this service mm -hmm. and they declined. They basically opted out and said, we can't find someone who's willing to go tow you guys. We found someone immediately. Mm -hmm. So I can only speculate about what was going on here. I, and this is why I referenced our breakdown and blown tire earlier in the season. That maybe since we had already made a claim in that season that they had ratcheted down what they were willing to pay for a tow. I don't know that that's the case, but I couldn't figure out why this happened. Yeah. Maybe there's a cap on what they're willing to pay a tire professional. Or a tow company or what have you. So they're just throwing out low ball offers to these companies and then they say, oh, we couldn't find anyone to come out and help you. Yeah. We have all this documented on video. Yeah. And so if, if anybody doubts that this story is true, we could show you in great detail the, the contents of the entire conversation. Yeah. I it's like even... you don't like to say that you had a bad experience with somebody. Mm -hmm. But we have to be honest and tell you what we experienced. And this was our experience, you know, with Good Sam in this particular situation. So this was not dropping the ball. This was picking up the ball and running in the opposite direction <laughs> towards the opponent's end zone. You know, this is worse than a fumble. Yeah. Because what if we'd been in a dangerous situation? Yeah, exactly. What if what if we had been needing needing critical help? You know, if, if what if we were somewhere where we had hardly any cell service, and I was just relying on this guy to make the call for me because I couldn't make numerous calls. Yeah, I'm sure the good Sam representative on the phone was simply following his directive Protocol. from he his was very management. Nice. He was never rude or anything like that. He was just doing, I'm sure, what the company told him to do but it was unacceptable service. We're in Napa Valley for crying out loud. Uh, they can't get a tow truck to Napa? <sighs> Unbelievable. All I gotta say is they're lucky that I'm a nice person because if I wasn't, I would be yelling and screaming and having a complete come apart on the phone. Yeah. Not that that would accomplish anything, but it'd probably make you feel better. It's really unacceptable when you've paid for a service and then they just flat out deny to honor it. I don't understand that. Maybe somebody can explain why that happened. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. Now, I will point out that later we wrote a letter 
to Good Sam Roadside Assistance requesting reimbursement for the cost of our tow, which yeah. I think it was 85 bucks or something and like that. And the guy on the phone told me, he was like, well, if you find somebody, he was like, you can submit your receipt. And he was like, they'll approve it or deny it yeah. and possibly reimburse you. Yeah, he said they would consider reimbursing yeah. us. To their credit, they did eventually reimburse us that cost. It took about six months and of course, had to fill out the paperwork. Sean wrote the email letter to go along with the paperwork and submitted the receipt, et cetera. So it was a bit of a pain in the butt, but we did get our money back. But you know, we never should have had to write that letter. Mm -hmm. They should have sent out someone to give us the tow that we had already paid for. Because right. basically when you buy this roadside assistance, you're buying a form of insurance, right? Which brings us, I suppose, to the current day. What do we have now? Do we have yeah. AAA or do we have Good Sam. The answer is neither. Neither. Actually, after that Good Sam incident, when we came home, got our reimbursement a few months later. When that policy expired, I did not renew it. And we actually went back to AAA and got AAA Plus. Because at that point, you could just go ahead and sign up for the RV coverage day one. We had that for maybe a year and never needed to use it. And then we changed our car insurance to State Farm. And with our State Farm insurance, it has a roadside assistance program. So it covers our truck that is insured with State Farm as well as our camper that is insured with State Farm. So that's something uh, that you all should check into. If you have obviously an existing vehicle insurance policy on your tow vehicle, it may cover your RV or maybe for a modest additional fee, mm -hmm. you could have it cover your RV. Probably you should call your insurance uh, agent yeah. and ask, ask for those details and find out, you know, will, does it have an unlock service? If you get locked out of your RV, will they come out and <laughs> unlock the doors for yeah. you? You don't think it'll happen to you, but it's happened to almost everyone at least once. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that's included sometimes, depending on your policy, is if you run out of gas, they'll bring you, you know, five gallons of gas or diesel, whatever you need to wherever you are. And that can also be covered in your policy. I will also point out, if you've been paying attention out there, you know we changed the tires on our trailer. We've always, at least in the last decade, run Michelin tires on our truck. We now run Michelin tires on our trailer. They're the LT tires. If you haven't watched that video, check out the video on our channel that discusses those tires in detail. Mm -hmm. Our peace of mind went way up after getting those tires, and I think our odds of contacting roadside assistance went way down because our tires don't explode every 100 miles anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think that number four over there that truck is. Just ran out. He just died. Holy cow. Can you even get us off the road? Holy cow. Oh, sweet Jesus. Unbelievable. I'm just going to have to like go. You just have to take our can over. Amazing. Truly amazing. Seymour got us to the station. <laughs> Thank you, sweet Jesus. If you travel far enough, often enough, eventually you're going to find yourself in a pickle. There's going to yeah. be a bad One way situation. or another, you're going to have a breakdown, you're going to have a flat tire, you're going to lock yourself out, you're going to run out of gas. Something eventually will happen if you spend enough time on the road. Right now, we're going with our vehicle insurance that also covers RV. That's the roadside assistance that we are currently using. And I can't tell you an experience thus far with the State Farm roadside assistance because since we've had it, we haven't had to call them. So take that for what you will. This is an opportunity for some of you experienced RV travelers to chime in. Do you have AAA? Do you have Good Sam? Do you have something else? Do you have nothing? <laughs> let us know and let us know your own experience and what's been working for you. I think it can really vary from person to person. I think some people are going to have one coverage and they're always going to have a great experience. And somebody else, you know, might have the experience like we did where we made a call one time and the experience was terrible. Yeah, I'm baffled by that entire episode in Napa, California with Good Sam Roadside Assistance. That is something that really shocked me. And to this day, it makes it very difficult for me to recommend that service, yeah. knowing that there is a chance they're gonna say, sorry, you're out of luck, we'll try again tomorrow. Because that's exactly what they said to us. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you know, maybe they've changed policy since then. I, I hope so. Maybe. I certainly hope so. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you once again for tuning in to Low Low Ho, also known as Long Long Honeymoon. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below. Share it with your friends and family. And until next time, what do we say? We say... Low Low Ho. Low Low, low, low Ho Nation. Dander boots, mountain light hiking boot against the traditional Dutch wooden clog. The Danner boot is constructed of an all leather upper that's made by hand of one piece of leather. The wooden clog is made by hand also one piece of wood. So we're gonna call this one a tie. Danner boots get the job done and they will last for years. Wooden clogs also get the job done and if kept termite free, they also will last for years. Plus, wooden clogs are buoyant. They will float in water, and in a pinch, you can use them as firewood. Advantage, wooden clogs. Dander boots are a little bit heavy and bulky, but once you break them in, they are very supportive and comfortable over the long term. Wooden clogs, not so much. They feel kind of like wearing a large log on your foot. Plus, you run the risk of splinters. Danner style is truly classic. You can wear these boots just about anywhere. Wooden clog, also truly classic, but you look kind of like a large elf whenever you wear these things. I'm not sure really what these are good for.